So we're talking about swales. We're in the process here. Most of it is halfway done. We're not finished with the, with the entire row, but most of this is halfway done, which means that the line has been set, which means that the turf has been chopped off and flipped, and some of the swale has been dug. But swales, you know, they're particular. They're, they're, they're not just, you know, ditches, you know, on contour. Uh, they, they've evolved from the CCC's time. Um, and I've done a lot of swale. I've done a lot of swale. And I've done them in lots of different soils. Some soils have crazy things in them, cool colors, lots of cool minerals, um, lots of clays. And uh, this soil has lots of rock. So I'm building beautiful spillways with these rocks. Maybe I'm going to do little rock like walls or something like that. I don't know. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. So um, it's required different tools. And so I've had to change which tools I've used. My trusty, my trusty shovel that I've, I've made all my, all my swales with, uh, I, st I still use. But I'm using other tools, um, much better tools. The grub hoe over there. We're going to get into all of it in the hand tool section. And in and, and, and this system right here, this is a very interesting, perfect kind of scenario because the sun starts right up over there and goes over there and sets over there. And so it's following right along this contour path. We're south facing. And there's these huge pine trees that block all the sun right up until this contour. So these are these, you know, to be shorter fruit trees, uh, perennial bushes. These are going to be the things that get the most sun. They're going to uh, not be huge canopies. going to be lower canopies. We've got plenty of huge canopy all around, and uh, this is going to be a really nice tree planting system. There's, it's over 40% sand. You know, less than 3% organic matter. Everywhere here, it, it really needs roots to tie it up. It really needs uh, to have biology to uh, start holding water, slowing things down. It's, it's going to be really beautiful and we're going we're, we're gonna to be able to tie in a lot of these, these things that are already here in place that are doing extremely well and use them uh, beneficially as well, both native and non-native, even invasive. We'll use, be able to use beneficially here. So we learned what swales are. The, they are tree planting systems that are, are created on contour that are meant to pacify water. They're used in all sorts of ways. Key line design uses them as well. They're, they're used very strategically there. Um, in the dry lands, um, they can be turned into diversion drains. Um, most of the time, they're designed to be very absorbent. So, so depending on where you are, you're going to do different things with your earthworks. In, in the temperate, you know, in the humid climates, we're, not, we're going to want an uncompacted berm. Uh, you're going to want that, uh, you're going to want to set a line with, with some sort of device that d d helps you create level. And then you're going to start cutting from that line uphill and putting everything else downhill. And in a dry land situation where you're going to want to stop the water and like soak it in right there, you're going to have compacted berms. So you're going to compact your berm rather than leave it uncompacted. If you want to check out like uh, the most amazing book, in-depth, encyclopedic, amazing book on dryland earthworks, check out Brad Lancaster's Volume Two um, of Rainwater Harvesting. Absolutely incredible. Um, so, so, but but here we're in the humid, humid, temperate. Um, so we're we're not compacting. And even in where I was, where it was really hot, I didn't compact mine. I just planted them really well, and they worked incredibly. Um, but if you're in the hyper-arid, if you're in the desert, you're going to be compacting and diverting, using swales, diverting the water towards a point of collection and absorption and retention. So th 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 that's why, that's, that's the way it is. So for our purposes here, we're trying to soak and spread and absorb the water and also retain the water because it's sand. Everything just flows right through and dries out really quickly. I remember earlier in the year, it's the rains had been here for a while, but they hadn't penetrated inches deep into the ground. I had dug up and saw it. It was crazy to me. So we need to gather water. We need to pacify it. We need to also have the life on the other side to catch it. You know what I mean? 
So this is what this is. This is right in the middle of our growing area. And there's a, a road right above us, the, the driveway. And then below us, um, there, really below us, there's no one. And then out that way is 40 acres of national forest. Um, that area over there is, is, we're not growing in, we're not using, we're leaving native. Uh, there's an erosion area over there that we have to maintain um, with, with, with natives to maintain it and not have any erosion. According to the county, that's the, the, the deal the landowner made. <laughs> they, they have very specific rules. I mean, every single tree here on this property is um, monitored by the county here in Washington. Um, every tree. People walk all over everyone's property here in Washington and examine their trees, at least in Kings County. And if you cut down your own trees, you get in some serious trouble um, because everything is monitored. Every tree is monitored, which it kind of reminds me, I mean, the bureaucratic stuff now, but it kind of reminds me of how everyone's responsible for, um, for the landscape in indigenous cultures. Uh, especially the Aboriginal Australian cultures, um, but 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 that area is protected. The area behind here, behind the camera, is also protected. And then right below the house is the area where there was potting soil, synthetic uh, synthetic nitrogen. I think is in the soil there. Um, I might do more so, more soil testing to see how far it extends. Um, but for now, we're going to be rehabilitating that area, setting up gray water possibly in that area, but growing in this area. So the swale is going to be a primary part of this. We're going to be planting trees in it. As you've seen, I've taken the sod over and as you've seen, I'm, I'm digging deeper. Um, I'm using this A-frame to create flat here. So it's like you're at the airport, you know, you're walking and it's flat and there's no, you know, rise or fall and, you know, no, 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 there's no variation. And it makes this really pleasant experience walking through it because it's perfectly flat. It's very, it's actually very, very comforting. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm going back. I, I, I'm cutting back into the hill and flattening it, but then I'm also cutting this so that it, it, it creates that, that slope, that sameness. And I'm probably going to have to come out a little bit further up and come down. And then I'm going to be replanting this area too. And that could mean several different things. Could mean just flicking seeds down, or it could be mean, uh, it could mean putting pockets, little ledges in. Um, and in this, I could also do a swale within a swale, where I could plant inside this on a furrow that was also on contour, which is kind of naturally what happens with the trees. They go on contour, and so um, their, their, their roots go on contour, and then it sets up this, this whole swale underground too, within the swale. Um, that, that becomes that net that slows uh, the water and then sends it downward too. So there's a, there, there's a, there's a lot to this, but I wanted to show you the, the, big, the big view the, the, so that you see how it cuts through the land. You see that it's, it's, it's flat here the whole time. Um, there's some sod right here, but, but as you can see, this is a shallow. This is a really shallow one. And, I know how the plants grow. They're going to grow out of here and up to here. And if I want to get by them politely, I'm going to need to have at least a path like this, um, if not a path to here that's flat and go further back. And then, and then even it out so that, so that it doesn't erode, so that the slope is matching the slope that it had. And then we replant it profusely so that it preserves um, the landscape. And we, and we start you know, taking back all the carbon that we've released by digging. Everything releases carbon. You know, our exercise, if a person exercises, they release more carbon. Um, so we just have to do our part to be carbon, beyond carbon neutral. We have to be carbon negative. We have to be sinking so much. So that's what we're doing here. Um, pulling the stones out, making the spillway, um, I'm cutting it with a grub hoe. I'll show you that in a minute here. But it all starts with the A-frame. Now, as we talked about, there are lots of ways to get level. But the A-frame is, is really, really something else. I really like the A-frame. Um, and anyone can make an A-frame. And what it is, 
is it helps you find flat. So, oh, this leg's higher, so it's lower. Uh-oh, this leg's higher, so it's lower on that side. But if they're perfectly even, it's right there in the middle. It's how you find flat. Now you might be like, but Matt, how do I figure out? I can get sticks, doesn't matter the stick size. They don't have to be exactly the same size to find flat. If you think about that, that makes sense, right? Um, it doesn't have to be flat here either. It can be crooked. To find flat is flat. You put it on still water and you can find it and mark it. It's easy. Or you can mark the feet on the ground, take a line, flip it, put them exactly to where those marks were, mark it again, and exactly between those two marks is flat. And, and this, th th this is really incredible. Some people don't even use this. Some people instead get a, um, a th they set it up so that they create a uh, perfectly flat um, uh, A-frame using a level. They just duct tape a level here or attach a level right here, right here, and so that they can go like this. And once it's set up perfectly, then it's always going to find level for you. Uh, but you have to first calibrate that properly when you attach it. Um, but then, but then you literally can just follow the contour line because that's what flat is, and you would stake out each. And we'll go over this. But but this tool, you know, you can create flat anywhere. You can do a swale, a berm, a garden bed, um, a pond wall, you know, dam wall, um, you know, the foundation for for a building or a chicken house, or, or whatever, but it's all in this A-frame technology, this simple, simple technology. It's quite amazing. So, so, so yeah, that's what I was doing here, was I was seeing how flat I had gotten it, whether the back was up or down, and, and, and it's really trying to get an understanding of how flat I was getting it. And this is coming along, but this is what it takes, you know? It takes a lot of digging. <laughs> And um, it takes some uh, some working, warming up to, and maybe sometimes it might take a party of friends. This was done with a friend, um, and we're gonna do a one above and one below with a huge work party, and so maybe not so huge. I don't know. We haven't had it yet, so we'll see the turnout. Uh, it may depend on you. You might be able to get you know dozens of people to help you. You might be able to, uh, be able to get only a few friends. But just one friend helped me put this in, in one day, and it's significant. I'm going to be able to remove stones and dig out the back and really cover this up and start planting in it. That's what's going on here. How about you come over here and we look at how to set this up?